Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today we are working on some modern farmhouse decor and these are DIY high-end dupes. One of them is a Pottery Barn find and this is also part of a collab. I'll tell you more about that later. DIY number one. This is my inspiration piece from Pottery Barn. It was $159. I just loved how huge it was and that it was a two-toned cutting board. So for mine, you don't don't need the remote, <laughs> but you're going to need some wood glue, something to cut the wood. I am using um, my hand miter saw here and I'll be using some um, power tools. You will need a measuring tape. You will need a couple pieces of wood that you can cut down. I will show you the sizes here in a second. This one is three quarters by one and a half by eight. And these were very cheap at Home Depot. The next size is a one by four by eight, also very affordable. Um, now they aren't like an oak or a maple. This is kind of my tester piece, so that's why I went with the cheaper wood to start with, and they were just a few dollars compared to the $159 cutting board. <laughs> but for the first one, you're going to use the thicker pieces of wood, and I am cutting mine at 24 inches, and this is going to be the base length of your cutting board, not including the handle. Now this video is part of a collab and it is called the Farmhouse High End for Cheap. It is put on by Deco Easy and Kiki DIYs. I am also joining DIYs at the Schwowen's Nest and the official Craft Nerd. So be sure to check them out after you're done with my video. I will have the playlist and their channels listed in my description box for when you're done with my video. So you will need four of those 24 inch pieces or whatever size you choose. I just chose that size because it um, equaled out to the eight foot length. So that was just easier for me. You can have it as long or as short as you want. Now this is just kind of a dry run here. This, we're taking the thinner piece of wood and this is going to be our handle. So this is all in, um, you know, what you want. But you want to kind of gauge it by like handle size, like, you know, just play around with it, see how long you want it. I ended up going with 30 inches, not the handle part, but the, that whole um, thin strip is 30 inches. And I was just double checking, making sure, you know, it's a good fit for my hand. And then I went ahead and cut that strip. Then you want to take your thicker pieces of wood and your thin handle piece and you're going to assemble it. So you want two of the thicker pieces on either side of the handle. And this does look a little bit boxy and chunky right now, but we're going to be adding some length to it here in a couple minutes. But first you want to attach your pieces of wood. I'm using wood glue and this is my favorite. I also got some clamps. I think this big bag of clamps was like $8.99 and it's a 22 piece. I got that at Home Depot. Turned out I needed some really long clamps, but I made it work. <laughs> You'll see here in a second. So I just took some of that wood glue and you want to use a good amount because this is going to be the only thing that holds your cutting board together but it will hold it very securely if you get enough on there. And yes, I put too much glue on there. You don't want the glue on the handle part, obviously. I just, you know, got a little carried away, but you're gonna end up sanding this here after it all dries, so I wasn't worried about it. And then if there's any wood glue that squishes out, make sure um, to just wipe that up good so that, um, you know, you don't have a mess on your hands later or have to sand like crazy to get the wood glue off. But here is where I realized my clamps were not long enough that I had already. <laughs> so I kind of was playing around with it, just trying to make it work. And it just wasn't holding it together like I wanted. So my husband figured out a way to get it to hold like this. So he took the two clamps that I had and kind of clamped those together. And it worked great. So longer clamps are on my Christmas list for sure. <laughs> So I let it dry overnight and then took off all the clamps. And as you can see here, it's super sturdy. Then I took it outside and I'm taking my sander. This one, I don't know the brand. I got it from um, a thrift store. 
I think like a year or two ago and it still works great. So I just sanded the top and the edges and I'm, as you can see here, kind of like rounding the edges. Not done yet, but I didn't want it to be, um, you know, super straight edges. This is kind of up to you. However, farmhouse you want to go, you could ding it up. You could hit it with hammers. You can scratch it up, whatever you want. I wanted mine a more modern farmhouse, so I'm leaving like clean lines and stuff as much as I can. But I still wanted to go with a farmhouse look, so I am using this Early American stain on my cutting board. And if you're using your cutting board for like actual food, you might want a better wood like maple or oak. And also, I don't know if you'd want to stain it. I really don't think that's food safe, so you'd want to use some sort of food safe like wax or um, sealer or something. So then you want to take the remaining part of your thin piece of wood and stain it a little bit different color, but something that complements the color that you already stained the cutting board. I started mixing colors because I wasn't happy with it. So I, I think I used hickory, um, early American, and then ebony, I think, just to make it a little bit darker than the actual cutting board. Then you want to measure your cutting board from the top. I measured mine five inches down and then five inches from the bottom. and then drew straight across so I would have a straight line to cut on. And then I took it back outside and made those cuts. This is where the two-toned effect is going to um, fit in. So I made the first cut and then adjusted my saw and I'm making the second cut from the top. And you wanna be safe, you wanna wear safety glasses and use the, um, the safety tools that come with your saw or you could easily just use the hand saw like this one. Then that darker strip, the two thinner pieces, you want to cut and this you wanna cut the width of your cutting board. And then obviously you're going to need to restain your edges there like the end pieces to match. Then you're going to reassemble your cutting board. And this is where you put your darker pieces or lighter pieces, whatever color you made them. And it adds a little bit of length to the cutting board as well. And same thing as before, putting the cutting board together with um, a good amount of wood glue. And then again, I didn't have long enough clamps, so I kind of just I don't know, put a bunch of stuff together to hold it as best I could. But this is what I did to start with. And that's it. I let that dry. You can let it dry for overnight so that it's nice and secure. But this is it all finished. I love the rustic farmhouse or modern farmhouse look to it. Let me know what you guys think. And I think just for a couple dollars, probably under... 10 or under 15. It looks very similar to me to the Pottery Barn inspiration piece, but let me know what you think and let me know if you're going to make one. I think it will be super fun to decorate for holidays and stuff. DIY number two. These are much easier, but they kind of go with the whole um, cutting board or display board. You're going to need this little round wood round. I think I got it from uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You're also going to need some wood beads or maybe some big chunky um, dowel pieces for the feet, some sort of paint. And originally I really really wanted to do it black because um, I saw an inspiration piece on Amazon which I can't find the picture right now, but it was like $48, <laughs> but it was black and I thought it was very cool. But when I opened up my black chalkboard paint, it had all dried up. So we are going to go with this antique white and I'm just going to do like a really light, light coat because I don't want it to be super solid. And then I just went around the edges as well. And I'm going to leave the feet, the little beads, um, the natural wood color. And then just attach them with some wood glue or hot glue, whatever you prefer. And then 
I'm just setting a book on top to hold them down just for a couple hours. And then this is what it looks like. It's very light. I like the antique white instead of like pure white. And I'm just roughing up the edges just a tiny bit. You barely actually even notice it at the end. So I could have just left it. But I think it's perfect as a cute little candle holder. And for those of you interested in these candles, I always have the link in my description box. DIY number three. For this one, you're just going to need some rope or twine, some more beads, and we're making a little um, wood bead trivet. This one is super simple. I think it got easier with each DIY. <laughs> so you just want to thread on your wood beads. And then for mine, I just counted out five beads and then made a turn in the twine. And I'm attaching them with hot glue. You could use wood glue or super glue, but just make sure you clean up any of the excess because you will see it if you don't. That first glob of glue I did was way too much. And if you're interested in high-end Christmas decor, dupes, I will list my um, most recent videos up in the cards and also in the comment section. So then after you get all of your rows done, repeating the same as you did for the first, just tie off the ends of the twine and cut them off. And then this is what it looks like. Make sure you clean up all those little glue spots if you used hot glue. Looks like I have a few to clean up. And then this is how I decorated my board. And then there's my little trivet. I'm going to put my little decorative antique teapot on it. And these I think are super cool. I picked them or cut them from our zebra grass out in the yard and then just let them dry. Well guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video on how to DIY some farmhouse decor for cheap. Let me know what you want to see next and thank you so, so much for watching. Be sure to check out the playlist in my description box. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye!